the folks who run the Aztec Athletic Department just promoted that Rocky Long was coming on the show, and they promoted it with a Twitter handle for Rocky Long. It is at Coach Long SDSU. I must admit, I did not know that Rocky Long was on Twitter. I would have bet a lot of money against that. Here he is, getting set for season number five on the Mesa. He is Rocky Long. Coach, good to talk to you. Darren Smith, thank you very much for the time. Oh, my pleasure, Darren. How are you doing? I'm doing well. You are on Twitter, I must say. I did not realize that. Well, let's don't get too excited about that. I'm not, I, I'm only on Twitter to converse with recruits. I don't do anything else but talk to recruits because that's one legal way we can do it. Other than that, I'm not on Twitter. Okay, so that's all you use it for? Do you, you don't spy? You don't find out what everybody's saying? You don't find out what your players are up to on a Friday night? Uh, no, I have somebody monitor their Twitter accounts, but I don't know. I don't talk to anybody but a few recruits on there. All right, fair enough. And like you said, that is the, I don't want to call it a loophole because that makes it sound like it's you know, a little shady here, but that is something yet that the NCAA, I wonder if the NCAA will ever do anything about that, if they're ever tell you that you can't talk to recruits on Twitter. I think they're going the other way. I think you're going to be able to talk uh, to recruits any electronic way you want to. I think they're moving in that direction. All right, fair enough. Well, Coach, how's your off season going? It's going all right. It's not the off season was a couple months ago. I mean, right now we're kind of semi in season. Semi in season. You're preparing for the upcoming 2015 season. I think the biggest question, yeah, you know, at least for me would be the quarterback position. It always is the most important. You have a great defense coming back. All of your starters are coming back in the secondary. Pumphrey's coming back. What he can do for an encore, I'm sure, is a subject uh, that, that we can discuss. But the quarterback spot, tell us a little bit about where you guys are here trying to determine a starter. We have Right now we have three guys competing for the starting spot. I thought all three of them had decent springs. Uh, one of them has a little more experience than the other two. Uh, one of them runs the ball a little bit better. Who knows? Maxwell Smith is a transfer from Kentucky that actually started as a freshman and a, so and a sophomore at Kentucky uh, until he got injured his sophomore year. After his sophomore year, they had a new coaching staff and went with a new type offense, and he was more or less the backup, and I think that's probably why he transferred. Uh Christian Chapman's a redshirt freshman from Carlsbad that had a really good spring. Uh, he's competing, and a guy named Jake Rodriguez is a highly recruited guy out of high school, transferred from Oregon, and those three are going to battle it out. Wide open competition. There's no favorite. There's no lead dog today. Well, going into fall camp, Maxwell Smith's the starter, Christian's the backup, and Jake's third sting, string. That's uh, based on spring practice only, so... About two weeks into camp, we'll, we'll determine a starter, and then he'll get most of the reps. You also have a new offensive coordinator. Uh, Bob Toledo retires last year, Jeff Horton. What's the, what's the style? Should we expect to see anything different in terms of the style of the San Diego State offense? Uh, not too much. Uh, Jeff Horton's been a head coach. He's been a coordinator. He's been in the NFL. He's been around a long time, and he's got a lot of expertise. I, I, I will give away a little bit. I think we're going to do more spread things. Uh, this year than we have in the past. Uh, we're still going to be based out of a pro formation and an eye back with a full back because we have such a good tailback and, and pump read, so we got to get him the ball a bunch. But there'll be a little bit more spread offense to it this year than in the past. And that is because, as uh, uh, you're a former quarterback here, but uh, you know, somebody associated with defense, you, you realize the challenge of it all? Is that just the way the sport is going? Uh, what, what would the reason be for that? Well, I, I think we can run the ball just fine. I, I don't think we threw it very well last year. I don't think we caught it very well last year. And I think the, this is a personal opinion, and it is Jeff's too, that I think in the spread formation, when you get in a spread formation, coverages are a little bit easier to see. Uh, the progression of routes is a little bit easier to decide on which side of the ball to throw to pre-snap. Uh, obviously, it makes it so we think it makes it simpler on the quarterback, and the hope is that we'll throw it to the right guy more often, and maybe we'll catch it a little bit better. Pretty simple stuff, huh? Yeah, <laughs> throw it to the right guy, catch it a little better. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Rocky Long is here. Uh, San Diego State season doesn't open until September, but they are underway here uh, and determined in their roster, their style of play. What does DJ Pumphrey do for an encore? He had a record-setting season, 1,867 yards. It was the most ever, uh, true sophomore last year, most ever for a single season as an Aztec running back, which is saying something. What does he do for an encore? I think he has the same kind of year he had in the, uh, last year. I mean, uh, he, he's a great guy. I mean, he works really hard. He's trying to get a little bit bigger and stronger. I'm sure as long as he stays healthy, he'll get the ball just as much. He does some a lot of special things 
with natural ability uh, with the ball in his hands. Uh, we've done some things in practice where he might be out there in the slot at a slot receiver a little bit more. Uh, we have some ways to get him the ball that we didn't last year, but most of it's because he's such a good player. You want him to have the ball. I saw one of the, I know how much you love all the preseason predictions uh, and the preseason hype. We've talked about this before. I know how, I know you love that sort of stuff, but I did see at least one publication. I don't have it in front of me, coach. And they, 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 they referred to Pumphrey as an overachiever. They said the biggest overachiever in the Mountain West Conference is Donnell Pumphrey. Is that the right word for him? I, I don't know if that's the right word or not. That doesn't make sense to me. I, I don't think he's an overachiever because he's got great athletic ability, great quickness, good hands, uh, sees the whole field, you know, follows blockers really well. I guess they're calling him an overachiever because he's not very big. I mean, right. he's about five foot nine and about 170 pounds. So I don't know. They have a hard time tackling him. I don't think that's an overachiever. I would agree with you. I think it's 100% based on size. I mean, when you looked at him, when you recruit a player like this, you know, did you just see the football player, or did you did you think, wow, I don't know about that guy. He's a little small. I don't know if he's the right guy to be carrying the rock as much as we want. Oh Well, obviously we're excited when we were recruiting him that we were going to get him, but we thought more of a scat-back type guy. We thought more of a punt returner, kickoff returner, maybe playing the slot. We had no idea – in my mind, we had no idea that he could run between the tackles like he does and run between the tackles with power. I, I don't know how he breaks tackles. I don't know how he gets up in there, but he's got the ability, so we're going to keep doing it with him. By the way, where do you keep finding these fullbacks? I thought that this was a dying breed in football, especially at the high school level with all the types of the changes in offense. Where do you keep finding these fullbacks? Well, we, uh, I guess we cornered the market. They call us. I mean, there's only a few fullbacks left in this world, right. and the ones that want to play college football, they find out who still uses one, and we, we get them calling us, the guys that think they're fullbacks. <laughs> You're not kidding, right? They no, actually... I'm not kidding. Right, because they're not calling Oregon. Well, they're not calling most of the schools in college football nowadays, so if there's a good fullback out there, it, it's funny how we get phone calls from him or his coach or his dad. <laughs> Rocky Long with us. All right, Coach. Your thoughts on, on the start of the season here for you guys. I look at it, you guys are going to play USD. I look at this, I don't know what you gain out of this game. I understand why it's done. You had a hole in the schedule. You've got to do what you got to do. Your approach to this game, your thoughts on the scheduling of a team across town here, which plays at a completely different level than you guys. Well, and number one, we, we didn't have a game. And I thought as much as uh, we do in the, to our players as far as working out all year long, getting ready for a season, to be one game short on the schedule, that's not right. So if, if we could find a game to play, uh, it really didn't matter who it was. So I'm glad we found a game to play. I, I think that it ought to be interesting to the local fans. I, I think we ought to get a good crowd out there. I, I've been on the other side of these kind of games many times. Um, they have they have some good players. They had a good team last year. They have a lot of their good players coming back. They'll be excited about playing the game. And whenever you play a game, you never know what's going to happen. And I, I think there's some local interest to it. Uh, you know, I, as you say, I don't know what we get out of it, but uh, we better win or maybe I won't be around. <laughs> you know, and, and I'm not laughing at what you just said there, but you're right. I mean, this is a game. There are positives to be taken You'll probably get a good crowd from both sides, from both universities. It's unique. We might never, ever see this again. It hasn't happened in, I think, 50 years or somewhere in that range. But for you, gosh, it's a game that just must scare you to death. Well, I, I tell you, it bothers me. I mean, because, you know, it, you don't mind being the, the favorite, but when everybody considers that it should be a done deal, they don't realize what kind of competitors – everybody has on their football team they you know they have some really good players they have a great coaching staff and 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 they'll be ready to play they'll be excited about playing and whenever you compete there's always a chance you'll lose hey rocky i also noticed too your few your upcoming schedule here going all the way up until 2022 i, I have it in front of me you know you're playing cal this year you're going to play cal again next year i see stanford i see arizona state i see ucla i see arizona going all the way to 2021 2022 this doesn't seem like a coincidence here. Uh, I, I think it's a statement about the program, where the program is here, that you have scheduled these kind of games all the way for the foreseeable future that you feel like San Diego State could be, not just to grab a paycheck because some of these are home and homes, but San Diego State should be you know, climbing up in weight class here and playing some of these Pac-12 schools on an annual basis. 
Well, that was, that was on purpose, obviously. Uh, most people don't realize, because in basketball, a lot of times the basketball coaches make a lot of their own schedule. In, in football, we don't, but, but I have a nice athletic director that always talks to me about the scheduling, and way back when I became the head coach, I told them we needed to play every Pac-12 school that we could as long as they would play home and home. And we've had great success. We've already done it with Washington, Washington State, and Oregon State. We have Stanford. We have Cal. These are all home and home series. UCLA, Arizona, Arizona State. We're working on Utah right now, and that's almost a done deal. We think we can do it with Colorado. There's only been two schools that have kind of balked at it. Not that they won't play us. SC and Oregon want to play us, but they don't want to go home and home. And I, I don't think there's a reason to do that unless they go home and home. Are, you wouldn't schedule these games, though, if you didn't feel like the program at least – yeah, you'll be underdogs. I'm sure you're going to be okay with that role to be an underdog. You know, Maybe not in your building somewhere down the road. But if you felt like these were games you were just signing up for just to grab a paycheck here, I, I don't know that this is, this is done. Is this a statement about where you guys are as a program with the consecutive winning seasons and bowl games? Well, we think we can compete, and and mm-hmm. I don't, you know, I I don't think it's fair that you go and play somebody at their place and they they don't return the favor, and and we want to prove we can compete, and the only way you can prove that is if you have to play them, and then it has a little more to say about trying to develop a fan base too. Uh, the local schools or the California Pac-12 schools, they will bring their own fans, and hopefully our fans will like to see those teams because they know those teams better. You can bring teams in from back east, and, and they'll have a big name, but they won't have the same draw as the guys on the west coast. Hey, Rocky, last thing uh, as we let you go here. Uh, we've talked a lot on this radio station. I know you tune in from time to time. We've been talking a lot about the stadium situation, about Qualcomm. I just wonder from your standpoint, as the person who is primarily in charge of trying to recruit players, Players to come play for your program. What role, if any, does Qualcomm play in the type of players that you're able to bring in here? I've thought a lot about this, but I, I think that we're in a, a win-win situation. I mean, if uh, if the Chargers stay, uh, that's wonderful for everybody, and that's wonderful for the community, and eventually we get to play in a really, really, really nice stadium. If the Chargers, for some reason, leave, uh, then we're the, we're the football uh, playing school in town, and maybe there's a lot of fans here now that go to pro games that would like to come to a college game. Do the facilities, though, do they interfere at all in your ability to recruit? So much money is being dumped into a lot, of, you know, including the schools that you're playing. Arizona, I mean, I was out there last year. Oregon is, is renowned. So many of these programs are dumping tens and hundreds of millions of dollars into the facilities. Do, do are, When players come in and they look around Qualcomm and they go, boy, I don't know, Coach. You know, I'm also getting recruited by a, a Pac-12 school here. Does it does it in any way limit the kind of player that you can bring in? Well, I, I think I think number one that, that playing in a pro stadium, uh, even though it might be old, is kind of a selling point. Uh, teams like to play, and players like to play in pro type stadiums. Uh, you know, I, I think sometimes uh, playing in a pro city helps because they think they're going to be seen quicker and seen more often, and so that helps recruiting as far as. Every one of the kids we recruit wants to be in the NFL, and, and that kind of helps. I, I think sometimes uh, being in a pro city divides loyalties within town, and people only have so much disposable money, and they're going to spend it on one team or the other. So I, I think we win either way. Well, hey, Coach, good to talk to you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, like I said, I always, I always can talk some college football here, so happy we had a chance to do this today. Thank you very much. We'll talk to you soon. All right, Darren, thanks for having me on. You got it. That is Rocky Long. He was getting set for season number five on the Mesa with the San Diego State Aztecs and though has a Twitter account, is not active on Twitter, as he said.